Welcome to 365 LOA. How to easily and effectively bring into alignment your thoughts, desires, beliefs, and actions, as well as create a positive parallel environment with those around you and the world as a whole. And now, broadcasting high atop the MacGuffin Towers in exciting Las Vegas, authors of the best-selling book, Advanced Parallel Programming and the Law of Attraction, Dr. Richard K. Nongard and R.J. Banks. So, Rob, I have a copy of The Power of I Am and the Law of Attraction. Oh, that's a great book. Who wrote that again? It was written by a <laughs> guy named uh, Rob Banks, R.J. Banks. <laughs> what a great author. But the, the reason why I, I want to talk about your book is because when I was working with a client earlier today online, um, he was trying to figure out some direction and plan in life, deal with some anxieties, mm-hmm. some feelings of dissatisfaction. He asked a question, when am I ever going to be happy <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to laugh at that. But a lot of people ask that question. Exactly. When am I going to be happy? I've asked that question before. And you address happiness in that book. It's really a central theme throughout the book. And mm-hmm. I know in the, the books that I've written, I always talk about joy. How do you turn stress into joy? How do you turn adversity not only into triumph, but into joy? So can you share with me some ideas for happiness? Can, can can we truly be happy, or is it too late for there us? There are two answers to that. <laughs> yes and no. <laughs> I will expand a little bit. For, I'm in, no, a, I'm in a giddy mood today. But you're happy because uh, <laughs> I'm happy because I'm happy. I don't know how. To, I don't know any more of the lyrics to that song. Plus, I don't want to have to pay copyright infringements. Yeah, the most um, for more than seven seconds. <laughs> no happiness, in my opinion, happiness is a choice. You can choose to be happy, and you know, on our on our uh, Facebook LOA Affirmations page, I have a little graphic thing that I put up there that I always use. It's like happiness is like the sun; it is always shining. It is it is always there, and it's actually that's a part of us that is that's our natural being is to be happy. But what happens if is if we're we're here and we don't see you know we don't see the sun? What do we always say? The sun's not out today. Well, the sun is out today because it's always there. It's just there's a cloud between you and that you and you and the sun. So, what choices do you have? You can stay there underneath the cloud and and do the boohoo thing, poor poor me, or you can choose to step out from underneath the cloud and be in the sunshine. But, so that's what I. How do I make that choice to step out in the sunshine when everything's been gloom and doom? I mean, sometimes people really question, is it even possible to truly be happy? Yes, it is possible. And when I went through my change of life. Sure. <laughs> I uh, I started, you know, I'm always, I'm always educating myself and always pushing myself to learn new things. Because the more I learn about myself the happier I can be and the more I can share with other people. And I get a lot of happiness out of sharing and enlightening and inspiring other people, just as you do. And that's why we work so good together. But I, uh, I started working uh, on my master's in not positive. psychology, ha- not psychology, but what's called positive psychology. Marty Seligman, professor, he's my professor there. And he is, they, they. He's the former president of the American Psychological Association. He's a. The, the 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 director of the happiness center. I was going to say he is the, the father of, of happiness. The, the <laughs> University of Pennsylvania, you know, he, and his research is awesome because it really focuses on, you know, psychology often studies pathology, mm-hmm. what's wrong, rather than what's right. And uh, boy, there's some great stuff in, uh, in 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 what he's written for people. So what I wrote in my book and what I've learned from uh, from my schooling is pretty much uh, D- uh, Dr. Seligman's. Um, thoughts, beliefs, and, and ways of, of looking at this. So I just wanted to read what his definition of happiness is, is paying attention to one's personal strengths rather than focusing on perceived weaknesses. I perceived think, weaknesses. So his, oh, go ahead. I'm well, sorry. I think you're absolutely right. You know, I ask clients um, who come to my office for therapy, I have them fill out what's called an intake form. It's just that, you know, name, address, telephone. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about you, what medications you're on, that sort of stuff. And there's a question on there. It says, what are your three strengths? Bingo. And it's interesting because I get the intake form filled out and almost all the pages are filled out. I mean, it's only three pages long. 
but I would say 70% of the people leave that blank. Mm-hmm. They are dumbfounded when asked to identify what's right with them. Exactly. But everybody knows that I'll ask this question on my intake form because I actually um, uh, don't want to bring attention. But if I ask them, you know, what's wrong with you? They can give me a huge <laughs> giant list. They'll say, can I have an extra piece of paper? Yep. But they leave that blank. Right now, while you're listening to this podcast, think right now about your deficits. What's wrong with you? Um, you know, are you impatient? Are you quick to a uh, sharp word or mm-hmm. an angry tone? Are you a procrastinator? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what is it that you struggle with? Chances are, by the way, that's the same thing you struggled with 10 years ago or the same thing you struggled with 20 years ago or even 40 years ago or even when you were a little kid. Now think for a moment about what's right with you. What, what are your strengths? Are you trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, voice clean, too. reverent? I mean, what's <laughs> right with you? Really think about it. Um, uh, you're an okay person, not because you don't have deficits, but because you've learned to use your strengths to compensate for the deficits. So my deficit, I'm the most unorganized human on the planet Earth. People I am, can rival. I can rival you on that one. But people, are, people are amazed when I say that. They say that's not possible, <laughs> Richard. Look, I don't even own a calendar. But my strength is delegation and teamwork. And Stephanie, who has we joke uh, because we went to grade school together. She's been organizing me since eighth grade. She's your so, radar. <laughs> she, right. She's my radar for those those who are Mash fans. And, and uh, uh, but her strength is organization. Uh, and, and, and my my strength is collaboration and teamwork. So so I've learned to compensate for my deficits by utilizing my strengths. That's what makes us that happy. Is your key. Stop trying to fix what's wrong. That's right. a negative mindset. Mm-hmm. The law of attraction would tell us to focus on what's right and what's wrong will slip away. If this was a baseball diamond, you just knocked the ball all the way out of the park, into the parking lot, past the parking lot, across the street, and into Safeway. Well, this doesn't only work in psychology. This also works in the corporate world. So there's uh, an approach to consulting. I do a lot of corporate consulting and business consulting and training as well uh, called appreciative inquiry. And companies who have applied an appreciative model uh, trying to figure out how to do more of what's right rather than fix what's wrong are not focused on the problem. They're focused on the solution. So examples of this include British Airways, um, uh, uh, John Deere, uh, many other uh, huge companies uh, during times of difficulty, instead of saying, hey, 6% of our customers are unhappy. Let's figure out what we're doing wrong. Mm -hmm. Instead says, wow, 94% of our customers are satisfied. What are we doing right? And how can we do more of that? And the appreciative approach, the positive psychology approach, rather than the problem-focused approach. So uh, I was talking to somebody the other day who said, I have a vast library of every self-help book ever written, but I still feel unhappy. And I would guess the reason why is many of those self-help books focus on the problem and how to get over the problem. But if you're always thinking about the problem, well, don't think of a yellow Jeep right now. While you're listening to this podcast, think about anything (laughs) except a yellow Jeep. Don't think about a yellow Jeep. Think about anything else you want to. What are you thinking about? I have a nice picture of a yellow Jeep in my mind right now. (laughs) Exactly. So if you're focused on fixing the problem, you're focused on the problem. Positive psychology says, hey, if we look at what's right and we try to do more of what's right rather than fix the problems, the problems will lose their power. What I learned from uh, from my class, as well as through personal experiences, but uh, and I and it's it's in uh, it's in the books as well that uh, that we wrote, and that is to find three your three most powerful strengths and build on those. And how do you find those? What are you good at? And just take that and, and, well, you're the doctor. How does one actually find those strengths? Can they, is, are we talking physical or emotional? Or I think we can look at all those areas. We can look at okay. our, look, even if our body has problems, I have an artificial joint in one foot. Mm-hmm. I have steel rods in the other foot. I guess they're titanium, technically. Yeah. Um, uh, uh, I have... Uh, uh, difficulty with uh, balance and walking as a result so of multiple how can foot you be surgeries. Happy with all that? So exactly, w- instead of focusing on what's wrong, I remember my, my my foot doctor telling me years ago, "And you will never run again." 
And that's something. <laughs> and I thought to myself, wow, what a negative hypnotic suggestion. How yep. does he know what I will and will not do? And I have to admit that uh, years later, I do not run very fast. But whenever I go to the gym, which is just about every day, uh-huh. and walk on the treadmill, I always make sure I spend a couple minutes running just to prove him wrong. <laughs> uh, but but instead of focusing on what's wrong with my feet, I focus on what's right with my feet. Wow, I still have feet, Rob. Uh, I, I, I might have discomfort in my feet, but I don't have pain in my feet. And because I don't have pain in my feet, my back feels good. You know, before I had foot surgery, mm-hmm. I, had, I, I thought I was going to have to have back surgery. And it, it, it literally fixed my back problem because I was walking at least better than I was before. So the reality is we can focus on what's right with us physically, my non-toothache. Today, I don't have a toothache, Rob. Yeah. In fact, I went to the dentist last fall and a bunch of cavities filled and things touched up and my teeth are fantastic. I I don't wake up with a toothache. And when I pay attention to my non-toothache, it brings me a sense of joy. But we can do that also in our emotions. Maybe I do have some depression or anxiety. But rather than bringing all my attention to that depression and anxiety, what else do I have? I have calmness. Mm -hmm. I have security. Uh, I have significance. Uh, In my relationships, wow, I've screwed up some relationships before, Rob. Uh, I I could write an entire book on how to screw up a relationship. (laughs) Friendships, romantic relationships, family relationships, etc. But despite the difficulties I may have even brought on myself earlier, whether it's guilt or shame or a sense of failure or a sense of loss, uh, wow, I can value the relationships I have right now. I have a a best friend, Rob Banks, and that's awesome. That's me. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So so we we can find, even among the, the trials and difficulties, the strengths that we possess right now. And one way to do that is to close your eyes for just a moment, to take in a breath, and as you breathe in and breathe out. Pay attention to that part of the mind where creativity lies, where intuition takes place. And spend a minute in stillness, just breathing, breathing in, breathing out. And then access that part of our awareness. And we can even ask our higher self, what's right today, Richard? What's good today, Richard? What strengths do I have today, Richard? And in that quiet moment of reflection, we can then take in a breath with a smile on our face. We can open the eyes and we can write down the answer so that we don't forget it. In fact, we can take a dry erase marker and write it on our bathroom mirror. I love that. (laughs) I am happy. I am happy. Do you know how many times I have affirmed that going through my last few years of my life? Sure. And But that that is what has kept me happy because that's what I'm choosing to do. And you know, that that that's, if you ask anybody, and this was something that we did in school, is to do surveys with people that you know. It's like, what do you want in life? What do you want in life? And the overwhelming majority for anybody and everybody that, that uh, does this survey the answer will come back. What do you want in life? I just want to be happy. I just want my children to be happy. Those are what we want in life. And, you know, it's, it's, we get brainwashed sometimes through commercial to commercialization and advertising that you're not happy because you're fat, ugly, overweight, broke, and all that kind of stuff. And you have an old car. Well, we can, you're not going to be happy until you get this new shiny car and you lose weight and you buy this phone and this purse and, all that kind of stuff but we know that's not really where true happiness there's actually three different types of happiness and uh, we don't have time to go into them but it's basically there's that physical happiness when somebody gives you a a hug a, 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 well I mean a physical I'll give you a, a it's like oh looky here it's like oh I just got a well you just brought me a what kind of ice cream shake was that? It was a, a turtle, turtle? sundae, oh, caramel, God. chocolate, and pecans. You, see, you know how happy that made me? Right. <laughs> but that's a very temporary happy because as soon as I ate this, I don't have any more ice cream. And so those type of happiness, it's the same thing. God, remember when you got that last, your new car, the last car that you got? Remember how happy you were when you got that? A week later, 
It's a used car. It's a used car. You're not as happy about it. But that true happiness that you choose, and this is, again, it's a choice, that happiness that you put inside of you is like, I am happy with who so I am. So there's our physical need happiness. What other right. kinds of happiness are there? Well, that emotional happiness. Okay. And that, and that a is... A sense of contentment, a sense of belonging, a sense of mm-hmm. security, significance. And, you know, we talked about the past, and we go back to the past, and a lot of people... The reason why they're not happy these days is because they don't allow themselves to be happy because of the experiences that they have had in the past, both uncontrolled or, as you mentioned earlier, things that you've done to yourself or things that you have caused maybe somebody else as far as strife or or hurt or pain or whatever. And so you look at yourself, it's like, well, I don't deserve to be happy. So therefore you kind of mentally flog yourself and keep yourself from being happy or keep yourself from attracting the wonderful things that you want in life because you don't deserve it because you're not going to be happy because well, you you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I think a lot of times what happens is we have previous experiences that didn't bring us happiness or joy. But what we fail to recognize is that today is not yesterday. It's a new day. It's a new opportunity. The past did bring us to where we are today. Right. It does shape us. It does give us a, uh, a set of experiences. But the reality is each day that I wake up is a brand new day and I can choose to to create a break between yesterday and today. And that is true no matter how difficult yesterday was. So? So? So why do we need to be happy when it comes to law of attraction? And my answer to that is because you want to put yourself on a high vibrational plane because that's where you attract. Well, I mean, we're attracting whatever frequency we're on. But the point that we're making here is when you put yourself on that level of happiness and you choose to stay happy no matter what, then you're going to stay on that high vibrational plane. And that is something that's so, so important when it comes to the law of attraction, because you are going to attract what your thoughts are and where your mind is going. And so this is a choice that you have. So what you're saying is that when we operate from a base of joy... We attract abundance more successfully. Bingo. <laughs> awesome. So do you have any tricks or anything that you can uh, share with people to, I'm feeling down in the dumps. There's uh, all this tragedy going on everywhere. What can one do to to uh, kind of thwart that from their life? You know, it's amazing how the simple stuff is actually the most powerful. There's actually research on this. It shows, by the way, that sunshine, that getting outdoors, that breathing in fresh air actually changes us both physically as well as uh, emotionally Mm -hmm. and that it can produce happiness. So what I've been doing in my life over the last two weeks while we've been in this coronavirus quarantine is I have been, uh, and it's also, by the way, I had surgery at the beginning of this time period. So I've been recovering from surgery. So I have haven't felt physically my best. I've been isolated from the normal things that I do. And so I've made it uh, a, a goal with intention each day to walk seven houses down to where the neighborhood park is and to just spend at least an hour a day outside breathing in the fresh air underneath the uh, the, the, the sunlight of the day, soaking in that vitamin D and just being alone with my thoughts or uh, my experiences and setting aside the stress of the world. Mm-hmm. And by engaging in that new habit of going outside and spending that 45 minutes or hour in the sun, uh, my entire outlook has changed. It's really been a, a, a pretty great two weeks for me, even though by any other official measure, it's been <laughs> a pretty difficult two weeks. Well, this is kind of that, that uh, you know, adapt, adapt and overcome. That's a choice. And it's kind of that, you know, the old, I know this is kind of a cliche saying of uh, when life gives you lemons, what do you do? <laughs> you make lemon popsicles. You make lemon popsicles. That's right. So this is kind of the same thing. It's part of uh, part of that resilience that we talked about uh, on one of the other shows. But uh, by the way, Rob, yes, we have a whole back catalog of three, six, five Elway podcast episodes, and almost each one of them teaches some real practical skills. 
and um, they're all free, so people can access. Where can one find those? 365LOA.com is oh, our website. But, uh, but you know, it, 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 you can go back and you can review these, or, or they're kind of organized topically. One of the things we would really appreciate, though, if you found benefit from this podcast, is to actually leave a review or leave five stars on iTunes or Google Play or Stitcher or wherever it is that you listen to podcasts. That would be really helpful to us. So if you've gotten some value from this episode and the previous episodes, um, it would really make us happy. Right, Rob? Well, I'm always happy, but it'll make me happier. (laughs) Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hey, by the way, that's another issue with happiness. What's that? When we become a little happy, we say, I'm not there yet. And so you become unhappy about the increase in happiness you've had. I think one of the other keys to happiness is to recognize that I have all of what I need mm-hmm. in this moment always. That's that that whole thing when we started the show about the sun is always shining. And that is one of the biggest questions that people um, sabotage themselves with is, I will be happy when, and then they fill in a blank with something. Right. Take that and erase that out of your vocabulary or your mind. Instead of saying, I will be happy when, just say, I am, happy. am always happy. Period. Period. No matter what. And we might not be 100% happy always, but even if we're 1% happy, then we're happy. You know, when you do, when you stay happy like that and you stay on that high vibrational plane, your your mind is so much more in tune with with what those desires are. You need to have a good, clear mind. Taking a breath. First thing in a tragedy, make sure your needs are met. Do you have something to eat? Yep. Do you have a warm blanket? Do you have somewhere to rest your head? Uh, do, do the people who are with have their basic needs met? And then step into the happiness of the moment, even when it's adversity. And what we find is that on the other side of that adversity, there's more happiness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Rob, uh, we're almost out of time. Okay. But... Uh, I want to encourage people to reach out and send us a message at um, in our Facebook group, which is, of course, Law of Attraction Affirmations, facebook.com backslash, or I guess technically forward slash, LOA, <laughs> LOA Affirmations. Affirmations. That's the easiest or way to find Or you can us. go to 365LOA.com. They can. By the way, at 365LOA.com, there's a whole bunch of free resources that we're happy to share with you and give you. By the way... Um, uh, if you've enjoyed this podcast, you can look forward to our next episode. We come out with a new episode every Sunday night and Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time. So tune in. Same place, same station, same channel. Next time for another episode of the 365 LOA podcast. Another happy episode. All righty, Richard. I bid you would do. Bye-bye Thanks. now. You've been listening to 365 LOA with Dr. Richard Nongard and R.J. Banks. For additional information, including free downloads, or to send them an email, visit 365LOA.com. That's 365LOA.com.